Call it a micro bike. Call it an electric scooter. It doesn't really matter because whoever's riding this thing obviously doesn't care what other people think. Hey everyone, Micah here with Electrek, and today we're reviewing the Jackrabbit 2.0, a hilariously fun little electric scooter. Let's check it out. The Jackrabbit sort of defies definition. The company calls it an e-bike or a microbike. I'd say it's technically more of a seated electric scooter, but ultimately it just doesn't really matter what it's called. What matters is what it can do. Now I know it looks funny, but give this thing a chance here, because there's a lot to like. With the rear motor packing 300 watts continuous power rating, it gets up to 20 miles an hour, and it does it surprisingly quickly too. I don't have any hopes that it's going to climb its way up Pikes Peak, but it sure does fly on flatland cruising, and I reckon that small hills will still be within its wheelhouse. The Jackrabbit doesn't attempt to be overpowered though, because it doesn't attempt to be over anything. The whole point is that it's a small, easy to use personal electric vehicle for city dwellers or college campuses. Now they say this thing is 23 pounds, but I'm not sure I believe them because it feels like it weighs 10 pounds. I mean, I'm sure they're right, but it just, it seems like you can pick this thing up and throw it around. It's just so lightweight. With such a lightweight design, the thing is super convenient to use. It's lighter than a typical folding e-bike, which makes it easy to carry up a few flights of stairs to an apartment, so you don't have to risk it getting stolen by locking it on the street. So in that way, it kind of beats a typical folding e-bike. And compared to typical standing electric scooters, it has much bigger wheels and won't get rocked by a pothole the way a standard scooter would. The wheels are 20 inches in diameter, with a thicker 2.5 inch wheel on back where most of your weight is, and a narrower 1.95 inch wheel up front for a nimble and lightweight ride. There's only one disc brake and it's on the rear wheel, but that feels like a prudent design choice. You're basically sitting on the rear wheel, and so you've got plenty of traction, meaning that brake has a lot of stopping power and you don't have the danger of going over the handlebars from a powerful front brake. On short wheelbase vehicles with so much weight high above the front axle, tipping can be a problem with front brakes. Here's what it looks like on a different brand of seated scooter with a powerful front brake. So yeah, I get the single brake decision, and it still brings you to a stop quickly and safely. Now I'm not saying the Jackrabbit doesn't look funny, frankly it looks hilarious. And if you're the kind of person that is self-conscious about how you look to others, maybe this is not the ride for you. But also, why are you so worried about it? Just have fun man. I look ridiculous on this thing and I'm loving every minute of it. Now if you thought things were weird, just wait because they get weirder. This is actually a folding e-bike though folding is kind of taking some liberties there. What you do is you open the safety clamp here, you release the handlebars, you spin this around, and there's actually a pin that locks in there. So now this is locked backwards, you can't turn the headset around. And now the handlebars come around here and let's see if I remember how to do this right. And they just sort of clip on to the fork here. How do you, let's try it like that. Oh yeah, and then the uh, pegs fold up here. Let's get those up. All right, now I've got a folded jackrabbit. And this, I could probably fit in the trunk of most cars. Not bad. Unfolding works the same way. You pop that off, you push in the little safety thing until you can turn the uh, steering tube around. Put the handlebars back in, lock them with the clamp. Turn that on, pegs down, kickstand up. All right, we're ready to go. Now there's a lot to like here. It's fast, it's light, it's convenient, but there are also some downsides. I would have loved to see some LED lights included on this thing to make it safer at night. And the range is also quite low. The small little removable battery is just 168 watt hours, which is tiny. But that also means you can buy another $199 battery as a spare and carry it in your bag without it taking up much space. The little battery is also low enough capacity that you can fly on US airlines with it. So that's kind of a neat perk. The small battery also means small range though. They say you'll get a maximum of 12 miles or 20 kilometers, but if you're riding fast like me all the time, then you'll be lucky to see 10 miles. This is of course not the vehicle for someone that has a 10 mile commute. It's just not for that. It's for someone with a three mile commute that just wants a lightweight and fun little runabout that they can bring into their dorm or their office when they're not using it, but that will also give a much better ride than a typical standing scooter. 
so for that niche use, I think they've done a great job here. Plus, it's pretty darn cheap at 1199 bucks. It's not the best performance for dollar out there, that's for sure. You can get faster e-bikes with more power for less money, but those are also going to weigh three times what the Jackrabbit does. Good luck carrying that up a flight of stairs. So again, this obviously is a niche vehicle, but that's what they built it for. It's a short commute, easy to use, fun little urban dinghy. And for the right type of rider, that's just what the e-bike doctor ordered. Thanks for watching everyone. We hope you enjoyed that review of the Jackrabbit 2.0. If you did, why don't you give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of our future electric vehicle videos. I'll see you here next time. Now that I'm